Arne Stewart was born in Cobalt, Ontario, an impoverished old mining town located 480 kilometers north of Toronto, near the Quebec border. Legend has it that a blacksmith threw a hammer at a fox one day in 1903 and accidentally uncovered the world's richest vein of silver. Mining boomed in the community until the 1930s when, its resources exhausted, it slowed to a trickle. Its legacy is the scarred surface of barren rock and deep craters that today surrounds the town. With little industry and a declining population, cobalt is typical of many of the towns of northern Ontario. Not exactly the fertile grounds for the growing of a Canadian hero. My mom and dad worked very, very hard, uh, but they couldn't read or write very well either. So my dad worked on the ground on the mine when he could. He used to be laid off a lot and didn't, didn't make too good much money. When we went to bed at night, we'd go up the stairs and there was two beds. My oldest two brothers slept in one bed and the six other brothers had to sleep in another bed. And we had quite a few holes in the roof. I could look through and see the stars at night. I should have become a star teller <laughs> or whatever. But in the winter time, the icicles used to form and look at you coming down, pointed down. And it was, it was very tough. Mom used to send us down to the store all the time to get dog uh, food. Go get some dog bones, go get some dog bones. We didn't even have a dog half the time. Arnie attended Cobalt Public School. However, coming from a house that possessed little money for school supplies, and where his parents struggled to read and write, there was little help or encouragement from home. Coupled with the fact that Arnie often arrived at school freezing and starving, reduced to plundering other children's backpacks for breakfast and lunch. It's no wonder that Arnie intensely disliked school. He took every opportunity and it used every ploy available to skip school. If I knew the nurses were coming to school to check our heads for lice, I knew they were coming. I used to put sugar in my hair. And they used to look and say, oh, you got nits. You're off for two weeks, so I got two weeks off with a few other kids. It was very wrong to do, but we do anything so we couldn't, didn't have to go to school. As a result, when Arnie was finally asked to leave school, he could neither read nor write. He was illiterate. Can you read this? It's a simple children's story. If you were illiterate, this is how it would feel every time you picked up a book your eyes meeting a meaningless series of squibbles, dots, and slashes. Just left for the ball. Don't be a lazy bones while we're away, they said to Cinderella. Seems like an easy thing to do, doesn't it? Reading to a child? After Yet 44 million adults in America do not have the skills to accomplish this simple task. She worked, she wept bitterly. And that's just one of the disappointing statistics. Wherever we look, the answer was the same. Over one billion adults in the world can't read. found in an industrial workplace can be very dangerous. They can blind, burn, and in some cases be fatal. Yet 20% of Canadian adults cannot read hazardous material warnings. And another 46% of American adults cannot understand dosage labels on children's medicine bottles. Besides these dangerous issues, being illiterate poses other problems also. Even a simple trip to a grocery store can be daunting. I needed something real fast for supper. And because my mother-in-law was coming over to babysit and I had to go to work and I wanted to feed the kids and myself. And I looked at the cans, but they had no pictures. There was no pictures of beans or spaghetti or nothing on the can. And I didn't know, and I just kept looking, I'd seen beef. So I brought the two big cans of beef home for supper. And I heated it up and cut the cans open, stirred it all up, and we all ate supper. My boy and my girl and myself. And the next day, my wife came home from up visiting my mom and dad. And she was taking the garbage out. And she says, Arnie, who's over at the house? I go, there's nobody over at the house. She said, well, there must have been somebody over here with their dogs. You got two cans of beef puppy gel. <laughs> I fed them dog food. <laughs> 
Not all stories of illiteracy are so light-hearted. Arnie was 80 from dumpsters, he was turned down from many jobs, and for the majority of his life, he was ashamed of his inability to read. You can feel Arnie's frustration when, after not being able to read a lane end sign, he almost killed himself and others. This is when he first decided that he would help children avoid making the mistakes that he made. And I can remember hitting the steering wheel. I was so mad. I said, God, just give me a chance someday to go back to school and tell them kids not to be an idiot like me. This is where Arnie's journey began. Arnie's first step was to seek assistance. This was difficult for him because all of his life he was ashamed to ask for help. He tried many agencies, but they were geared towards helping new Canadians and taught stuff like... This is a fork. This is a knife. Arnie already knew this stuff, so he turned to private tutors. Next, Arnie started going into schools and telling students about his hard life of illiteracy and how to stay off the rough path that he chose. A slogan began to crystallize from these visits. Always ask for help. You young people can do it. Just ask your teacher for help. I was afraid to ask for help. And a lot of people are afraid to ask for help. And that's why we never got it. Arnie's presentations were having a positive effect on students. He was reaching the exact type of kid that he hoped to. Those who were most like him when he was a child. So. Has Arnie changed your opinion on school? He really has. Like, I'm kind of a person who doesn't like to go, so he really makes me want to try like reading, writing, math, and everything. That's terrific. Thank you very much. Still, he worried about kids who, for whatever reason, maybe they were too embarrassed or too shy, refused to ask for help. Those who didn't approach him at his talks and huddled silently to themselves during class. He decided to start handing out Arnie cards that kids could write their names on and submit to a teacher. He reasoned that some kids may be more comfortable with this route than with face-to-face -face encounters. Though originally intended to help with literacy issues, their scope widened beyond Arnie's wildest hope. So at the first school we handed out 350 of these cards. As soon as we left, one student came forward who was in grade 7 and I guess he slipped his card underneath his principal's door. And she went to find him, she pulled him out of class, and she said, you know, what can I help you with? What's going on with you? And he lifted the sleeves of his shirt, and she could see that he had cut his arms all the way up with razor blades. And he said, I'm doing this to myself, and I need help. I need to stop. Can you help me? And uh, they got him help. And it's just been incredible. That's only one of the many, many stories of students actually coming forward. Arnie continues to speak to children of all ages. He has received thousands of letters from students across southern Ontario and tries to personally respond to each one of them. Arnie is strengthened by his dream to see all children succeed in life. And I dreamed that I was a, a seed. And this garden of mine was a beautiful garden. And I was a seed like all the other people having hard times like me. And I was planted into that earth. And all these other seeds that were having problems like me was planted in. And I looked down and I see all these little weeds coming up, little flowers. And I look up and I see all the raindrops falling on us. And there are teachers and students and volunteers falling on all those little wee flowers helping us to grow. And I look up and I see this beautiful big sun, which is the good Lord shining on us and helping us to grow. And I look down, I see bigger flowers, all different kinds of flowers, different colored flowers, just like there's different people in the world, different colored people, different kinds of people, and they're all growing. And I see this beautiful big rainbow. And I see all our students going over the rainbow together. And we're dropping off our petals, looking for our pot of gold. And our pot of gold is, when the petals drop off and land on the ground. When I see this beautiful flower garden, I see a, a, a weed and I go, is that a bad weed? And I go, no, that's Arnie. And I'm saying, please, don't pull me out and throw me away. Water me a little bit, love me a little bit, and I could turn into a beautiful flower like you guys. <laughs>